hi guys welcome back to african Airways. i really hope you guys are doing amazing so on today's video i want to talk about black panther the new film i mean if you don't know about this film you're probably living under a rock but basically i want to talk about some of the underlying messages that we may not be privy to or rather we did not think critical enough while watching the movie which is understandably because even i missed some of these things i'm gonna quickly let you guys watch a clip by dr omar johnson he really does a good job at explaining some of the underlying messages behind the film and i really hope you guys enjoy this video and i'm gonna chime in after the explanation by dr omar johnson just to quickly give you guys my own thoughts on the issue I didn't go to the movie to see Mexicans beat up on black people. Okay? Oh, the okay. underwater people was uh -huh. Mexicans. Yeah. Okay? They basically gentrified the movie for Mexicans. The Mexican <laughs> hero, you no, saw yeah. the Mexican I, I hero. See, yeah, but I, I know he had I, more I, 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 spoiler free version. He, he, like, he had more air time in the movie okay. than anybody from Wakanda. So they should have it shouldn't even been called Black Panther. Yeah, it should have been like, called the gentrification of Black Panther <laughs> by the Mexicans. But here's the point I want like to get to. Breaking him out here's the that. point that I want to get to. After the Mexican god kills Queen Mother Angela Bassett, he murders her. Uh, uh, that's a spoiler. Shuri, oh Shuri, Shuri has a chance to murder him back. And, and instead, she, she exercises patience and says, we can work together. And what does the Mexican woman say to the Mexican at the end? Why are you forming an allegiance with Wakanda, yeah. you should have destroyed them. And what did he say? Don't worry. They trust us now. The mm. Wakandans are the most powerful surface nation in the world. Mm. And we got them while we want them. So even in Black Panther, we <laughs> don't learn our lesson. We are vicious with each other. Never vicious with our enemies. Never vicious with our enemies. You got to force a black person to spend a dollar with another African, but we will give $30 billion to the Korean hair care establishment every single year. And the Koreans have never stood up for black folks a day in our life. We are literally financing our own oppression and that, we don't want to admit it because yeah. we do not want to discipline our economic dysfunctional behaviors. I'm going to let that slide because you're Dr. Umar. Hey, I hate spoilers though, but sidebar, the whole video or I did a whole video on spoilers though, but listen, we don't um, own that. That's you, Disney. Did you did you see uh, um, did you see uh the first one, Black Panther one? Yes, I did. How you feel about that one? The the messages were horrible. Uh, the cinematography was excellent. Shout out to Ryan Coogler. You deserve 5,000 lashes for that second one. Though. <laughs> you also deserve 5,000 lashes for the messages in the first oh, one. Man. The messages in the first one were horrible. Basically, Killmonger was a metaphor. For woke black Americans. Mm -hmm. Prince T'Challa, the Black Panther, was a metaphor for conservative Africans on the continent. And the message was to Africans in Africa, don't mess with those woke black Americans, because even though they woke, they're not going to respect your culture. And if you let them come to Africa, they're going to destroy everything you value sacred. And the message to African Americans was black people in Africa don't want nothing to do with you and they do not trust you. So you should just best stay here in America and try to work with us white folks. And then to make it even worse, the CIA agent Ross, the white yeah, man, the white guy, he saves the day towards the end of the movie in the yeah. first movie. How in the hell can the CIA be the savior of black people when you murdered King, you murdered Malcolm, you overthrew Kwame Nkrumah, you helped uh the apartheid government tracked down and arrest Nelson Mandela. You participated in the assassination of Amakal Cabral. You had input in Thomas Sankara. You executed Patrice Lumumba. Uh, uh, you overthrew Maurice Bish in Grenada. We could go on and on and on, on about the CIA. The CIA has been Africa and African people globally. They have been our biggest problem for 50, 60 years. How dare you make them a hero in our movie? I got a question. Black action, Panther man. was a CIA FBI propagation movement. So guys, after listening to Dr. Omar Johnson's uh, explanation of the entire film, one the first thing that really happened was I was left speechless because to be honest, I did not even re think really deep into that film when I watched it. However, one thing clicked in my mind after watching um Dr. Omar Johnson's depiction or other explanation of the entire film and i realized that when it comes to the white man there are certain tactics that he uses to ensure that he maintains his superiority over black people and i'm gonna quickly 
remind you guys of something for those of us who've really done our history during slavery black people were not allowed to read and the reason behind this is because reading would have enabled them to know that they are not supposed to be enslaved that they actually deserve to be respected and that they are equal to the white man but because they did not know these things and because the white man knows that as long as he keeps the people in the dark and unaware of what is going on then he'll continue to oppress them and discriminate against them because these people lack an understanding of who they are guys it is so important for us to understand how movies and and how movies and films really influence our society in terms of structuring how we think and even how we relate to each other when you look at black panther on the face of it it looks like such an amazing field it's supposed to empower black people but really when you deeply take a look at it it has very many subliminal messages most of which are actually against black people it's important for us to really understand that we need to really be very careful of the, of the information that we take in because i can compare this situation with a situation during slavery where black men were not supposed to read and right now despite the fact that we no longer have slavery at least for the majority of it we don't have it the point is we are still being kept in the dark i mean the the message is literally written on the wall but a majority of us cannot perceive it you understand we cannot see it because again the white man knows what he is doing so guys i just quickly want you to watch other clips from other creators who really had some thought provoking opinions on the film and basically the entire hollywood industry and i really hope you guys are going to enjoy this i'm gonna meet you at the end to again give my opinions on what they had to say Four leading black male actors in the number one miniseries in recent American history. You got Lucius, Andre, Hakeem, and Jamal. Lucius, you got a narcissistic black male from Philadelphia. Don't trust his baby mom. Exploits, uses women. Don't really like women. Except for sex and to use them. Then you got his oldest son, Andre. Ivy League trained, accountant, white wife. Then you got his next son, which is Jamal homosexual in love with a white male then you got his youngest son Hakeem hip-hop head heterosexual doesn't trust women uses abuses and exploits how can you have four attractive leading black male actors in the number one miniseries on TV and not a single one has a positive and healthy relationship with a black woman you know why because they are socializing and indoctrinating our children empire ain't for you and me we know better Empire for our 12 year olds empire for our 14 year olds because if my 17 year old daughter looks at that She would ask herself. Why would I ever want to be with a black man after watching this and if my nephew? Okay, who's 12 13 looks at empire and looks at the way the women conduct themselves and carry themselves Why would he ever want to be with a black woman? These shows are political Designed to brainwash black children against authentic black love Hey black people, I made this video and TikTok is, you know, hiding it. If you can't please share it, please share it. So I was talking about the Black Panther, the new movie that is out, Black Panther, right? And you're all excited, you're seeing warrior women, strong women, black women, powerful women, and I have an issue with that. So if Hollywood wanted to do a fairy tale about Africa, at least I thought they could portray Africa as it is in Africa. And it's nowhere to be seen. And here's why. So me, I'm from Africa, and my mother can never go out and fight men. My mother does not go out and fight people. My mother is strong spiritually. My mother is strong as a woman and not as a man. Uh, the power that they are portraying in these women is not for women. It's for men, because here is also a problem. So in the first movie of Black Panther with Tichara, rest in peace, that character Tichara was a symbol of greatness, especially to the black young boys. It was a sign, it was something they could look at, it was a character they could look at and feel empowered, feel strong, feel loved, feel like they can do anything. Because if you look in history, there is a lot of characters of superhero movies who are white characters, who are white men characters. So our black boys needed this character to empower them that they can also be anything they want and they are heroes as well. And here is also a problem. And when it comes to white women 
when you look at movies like Transformers, they are saving a white woman. When you look at films like uh, King Kong, a gorilla is saving a white woman. When it comes to films like Spider-Man, those are big movies actually. They are still saving a white woman. Don't, don't say Zendaya. Zendaya represents biracial and mixed people, not black people. Let's stop with the ignorance. When you look at a film of Jesus, even God, it's a white man. So actually, I feel like as black people, you want to accept everything that is put in you. And because you're seeing Lupita Nyong'o, who is East African, as an African, represented in Hollywood, and is playing as a woman warrior, you're like, oh my God, we are represented. What are you represented in? You, a black woman in Africa, can you go and fight in the war? Can you go and fight men? Because we need to talk about these things. You know, I cannot. I cannot. When was the last time you saw a black woman being portrayed as innocent, a black woman being saved, a black woman being shown love? And I'm tired of these strong black women. Other women are also strong and independent. Why are they not named? Why us? And in Africa, we have kingdoms. Those kingdoms have kings and queens. In the first movie, there was the king and the queens. In this movie, it's just women. That is not how Africans move. We have kings in our homes. Black men are strong men. Black boys are strong boys. Let's not take our men's power away. That movie is taking away black men's power, and I am not into it. That movie does not represent me as an African. As a black person, I'm not into it. Can we wake up just because you're seeing black people in movies, you're excited about it? Let's wake up. So I just left seeing Wakanda Forever and I am, I'm pissed. I am pissed because if pushing an agenda was a movie, this would be in the forefront of that. This was Woman King on steroids. If you think that I'm going to believe a 100-pound black woman soaking wet is just an almighty warrior and can just body dudes like it's no tomorrow, come on. Like, instead of Wakanda, it should have been called well, all the men because they was not there, they were not present, and the ones that was there was weak. But all the women that was in the movie was just brolic built strong hercules what is this saying to us perpetuating the idea of the strong black woman and a subservient black effeminate man i just think it's disgusting i'm completely upset by the movie and um man if this Kyrie Irving didn't teach me anything it's when you put your life career in the hands of other people that don't look like you, then they can make you do whatever they want you to do. And this movie does not represent what African culture is. It doesn't represent what our culture needs to be. So, now nah, I'm good on Wakanda. We're all dumb in. The amount of people last night that left the theater before the credits started that's been bothering me all day like i was sitting yes i'm still talking about black panther no spoilers i promise i was sitting in my seat the last scene ended and a bunch of people just got up and started walking out i was like are y'all okay do y'all have y'all never have y'all never been to one of these before if you go to the movies with somebody, a Marvel movie with somebody, and they leave before the credit starts, that's not your friend. Watch your back. Do you see Jews asking Chinese to teach Jewish kids who they are? Do you see Arabs asking East Indians to teach Arabs who they are? So why the hell are we going to our former slave master to teach our kids who they are? Those white women don't know who we are, but you got a church on every corner. The teachers go to the church. Why can't the church open up one night a week for free black history education? If we really care about teaching our kids who they are, you got churches on every corner. Why can't we teach our kids ourselves? You know why? Because we too damn lazy. We want to keep on asking white folks to do what we don't want to do. And you know so guys, there you have it. That's the end of the video. And just a quick reminder, guys, just remember that when it comes to movies and the film industry, they really have a very critical function in society because movies depict what is happening in society and they also predict what is about to happen in society so it's very important for us to understand our role when it comes to promoting certain films and stuff like that because we could really be financing our own oppression without knowing and i think at this point 
lack of knowledge honestly will just be the death of us so it's very important for us to get educated and i really hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and until next time bye